So today we will be discussing the Code Chef January long challenge question, Do Fish Matrix. I must say that it is a very interesting question and after burning my head for complete two long days, I came up with the pattern. I could crack the pattern within this matrix. So, so I have divided this video into two sections. First section where I will be explaining the problem statement, what are do fish matrices and, and then I'll also be explaining the pattern that I found within this matrix and then in the next video, I'll be coding the code that I wrote. So that will be a screencast of the code. So both the videos are important. So I'd request you to watch both the videos and in sequence. So watch this video and then watch the coding video. So one very obvious question that you might ask here is that how did I find this pattern? So, so this is a very obvious question. So I would only say that after scratching my heads, for two long days and staring at this do fish matrix for two long days, I could finally find a pattern within the matrix. So I'm very excited to share this pattern with you. Hope you enjoy this video. So let's get started. So first of all, so for n equals to four, so we have an n cross n matrix. First thing we have an n cross n matrix. Now, so this is a do fish matrix that I have written. This is also a do fish matrix for n equals to four. So note, for a given n, there could be many do fish matrices that we could have. So you need to notice that. So it is not essential that the pattern that I say that, that I find here is a general pattern that will be observed for any. So if, if I see a pattern here, so this pattern will obviously not follow because these are two different matrices. Okay. So let's understand what do fish matrices are. So we have in this for n equals to four, we have four rows and four columns. Okay. Four columns. Now what we do is we need to see that for row one and column one combined that row one and column one, if we take all the elements in row one and column one, these elements should be from one to two into n minus one. That is from one to seven. So if you see the first row, this is the first row containing four elements and the first column again containing four elements. This is the common element. So what we have, we have a total of two n minus one elements, two into n minus one elements. And these elements should be from one to two n minus one. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. This is all that we need. So let's see if this matrix follows that property or not. So for this first row and first column, we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven. So we have all the seven elements that we needed. Now let's check for the second column and the second row. So let me change the color. So for second row, and second column. So this is our second row and this is a second column. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven. So similarly, we can see for third row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And similarly for fourth row. So this is all about do fish matrices. So for every column and every row, you need elements from one to two n minus one. Similarly, if you, if you see with this example, this is a different example from this. You see the seven, one, two, three, the seven, one, two, three, but this is four, seven, three, two, and this is four, seven, three, five. And the last row is also different. This is six, five, four, seven, and this is six, two, four, seven. This is six, five, this is six, two. So this is also do fish matrix. Let's check if the fourth row and fourth column contain all the seven elements or not. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven. So the fourth row and fourth column satisfies the property. So this is all about the problem statement. Now let's see what is the pattern that I have actually found. So here are three do fish matrices that I've written for n equal to four, for n equal to eight and for n equal to six. So first let's start with a smaller matrix and okay. First let's start with the bigger matrix. So observing the pattern would be easy for the bigger matrix. So we see that 
from hair to hair if you observe this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 in that order starting from 1 and going till n minus 1 starting from 1 and going till n minus 1 because n is 8 here so n minus 1 is 7 you see here also this is starting from 1 going till n minus 1 what is this this is the first row except the first element that is if we talk i equal to 0 that represents the first row and j equals to 1 to n minus 1 1 to n minus 1 this last index will be n minus 1 and this will be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so j will be 1 to n minus 1 leaving the first this and i will only be 0 so this is the pattern in the first row similarly you can see here also 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 to n minus 1 using this we will be calculating the entire matrix so this is very essential here so we take this and we store it in a list so i am also giving a little bit of hint here that how i will be coding in the next video so it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now what I see is from, from this second row till the nth row that is from index 1 to n minus 1 what I see that so this is the principal diagonal I only do calculations for this side and later on using these like the upper triangle we find the lower triangle so there's a relation between the upper triangle and the lower triangle that we'll be seeing in just a minute so so how will be so how we will fill this upper triangular matrix is that we'll start from the very last element in every row we start from the very last element now you see that these elements from where did the from where did we get these elements is the question so we get these elements from this list from this upper row so if you see this 2 is this this 4 is this 6 is this then 1 is this then 3 is this 5 is this so now so now you can observe the pattern so what we do is we start from this we skip one then we go here, we skip one, we go here, then we skip one and go here. So in a circular manner, in a circular manner, in a circular manner, start from here, skip one, go here, start, then from here, skip one, go here, skip one, go here, skip one, go here, skip one, go here. Okay. Till we, we go, we do this continuously till we fill all the rows, all the last element for the rows. Now, once we have filled the last element, what we do is we move here. Now we start filling from this side. We start filling from this side we start filling from this side okay so we fill the last element then we fill like this last ele last element then like this last element then like this last element then like this okay so now what's the pattern here is we are at 2 so this we are at 2 we are at 2 we are at this position what we do is at this position now we start filling in sequence 3 4 5 3 4 5 6 7 6 7 oh wow now we are now when we are at 4 so now we are at 4 we start filling from this 5 6 7 and we are so we already i have mentioned that we are doing it in circular manner so 5 6 7 then 1 1 then what we do is at this position we are at 6 we are at 6 so we are at 6, we are at 6. What I do is 6, then what we do is 7, 1, 2, 7, 1, 2. Beautiful. So let's see with this. So this follows for now. One thing also I would like to mention that I should have mentioned earlier is that do fish matrix cannot be created for odd numbers. For odd numbers, you don't have do fish matrix. That is not possible except for n equals to 1. 
So for all even numbers, you can find a Dufish matrix, not only for powers of two, these were powers of two, this is power of two, this is power of two, but this is not a power of two, but I have written down the Dufish matrix for n equals to six. Let's see if it follows the same pattern that it followed for n equals to eight. So for this, the list that we have, we have to take into consideration is the list that we have to take into consideration is one, two, three, four, five. So we, we start from the second row all the way till the last row. What I see, we are at two, we are at two, two, four, one. So let's do it like this. We do it two, four, then again, one and three. So we are following the same pattern for the last elements. That is we are skipping one and moving ahead. So this is two, skip one, four, skip one, move back in a circular pattern. So let's see if like this, it follows the pattern. So we are at two right now. What we do is three, four, five, three, four, five. Beautiful. We are at four. We are at four. What we do is five, one. Beautiful. We are at one. What we do is two. We are at three. We don't have any elements. So we stay there only. So we fill it likewise. Now we have filled the upper triangular matrix completely. Now we need to see that there's a relation between the upper triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix. So it has become a little messy here. So please try to concentrate and understand. So this is, this is I J and the corresponding J I is this one, the six. If I see, if I add five to this, then I get this Two, I add five, I get this to this. I add five, I get this to this. I add five, I get this. Now let me take another thing. So this now, if this is I J, so the J I for this is this. So the lower triangle, the corresponding, uh, for I J, the corresponding J I. So for five, we add five, we get here. And let me take two, add five, we get here. Take any element in the upper triangular matrix. You will be getting a corresponding element in the lower triangular matrix by adding five. So this is five. And what is the corresponding element for this? This is 10 here. Okay. Five and 10. This was this, this is related. This and this is related. This and this is related. Okay. So now what is this five? If you see for n equal to six, we have five. That is n minus one. So the relation is if we add n minus one in the upper triangle matrix, we get the corresponding lower triangle matrix. If you see here, if I draw it, one plus three, n minus one, here is for n equal to four, n minus one becomes three, one plus three becomes four, two plus three becomes five, three plus three becomes six. So that's all about the pattern finding. So quickly move to the next video and see me code. Thank you.